guys, welcome back. Uh, out here today working on the Redneck track back. And I had some footage of it on my phone, but I kind of lost it. But the old Tecumseh six horse engine that was on here finally died. Uh, started missing real bad. It wasn't wanting to start. Got to looking at it, and the magnet inside the flywheel for the ignition had broken. And it, it was using some oil. I mean, it had seen its better days. So it was time to replace it. Word of advice. That little six horse Tecumseh, for some reason, has a larger shaft than the standard um, 206 cc engines, your normal like Briggs and Stratton, Honda, your, your standard 200 cc class engines. Um, I didn't know this until afterwards. Long story short, I went down to Harbor Freight, got a 206 cc Predator engine, was going to put it on here, got it home, the shaft was too small. Now, did not know this, if you're going to do this on a project, you get on Amazon, they actually have sleeves or spacers for those shafts that you can slide on and then slide your attachment on. And had I known that, I would have gone on Amazon, ordered one because they're fairly inexpensive, put it together that way. Um, because I think a 206 cc engine would have been perfect. But didn't know that at the time. Returned a 206 cc Predator engine and picked up. Oh, good gracious! This nice 301 cc Predator engine from Harbor Freight. It's a little more expensive. It's got more power. The downside is, and now I did have to reclock the recoil start. You can see this is sideways because it was clocked this way before. When I mount it on here, the way it needs to be mounted, that puts the gas tank to the rear. The pull starter was back here. I'd have been pulling into this netting every time. So I reclocked it 90 degrees to get the pull start facing the front. It's real easy to do. You just take these four, or no, there's only three bolts. These, the bolt here, here, and here. Take those loose, you can pull the whole housing off, you can rotate it, there's multiple positions you can mount it in. It'll work just fine. Now, on this side, the problem I ran into uh, is that the shaft length on this one is longer than the shaft on the original engine. So the spacers to hold my housing would not work. So I had to come up with some new spacers. I was going to machine them. I think I've got a solution for the problem that will work fine. Now, what I'm doing to make up the extra distance, I need basically an inch and 15 sixteenths worth, worth of a spacer to make up the extra distance. What I picked up, give me a second here, were these all thread couplers and these are 3 8 The bolt that threads into the engine here is a 5 16 So, with a 3 8 spacer, these, ah, these spacers are roughly an inch and a half long. And then, so they'll slide over the bolt. And then I've got a quarter inch chrome spacer to make up the last little bit. Now, that's going to get me within a sixteenth of an inch of where I need to be and I have enough play in the housing to make that up. Now, the only thing that these bolts actually support is the outer housing. The impeller wheel is mounted on the shaft, so that's not going to matter. It can only go so far in because it's got an end plate welded on it. So, I'm going to get to assembling this because the leaves are starting to fall. I'm going to need to start doing leaf cleanup and we've got to get this sucker bolted together so we can use it. So, you guys sit tight, do me a favor, don't forget when it's all over to rate the video, but in the meantime, subscribe to the channel if you have, and if you have, hit the notification bell, please share this with your friends, and hang in there, we're going to get right to work on putting this sucker together, <clears throat> and getting it out, and getting it back to work again. And hopefully with this 300cc engine on here, She'll have more than enough power to run the uh, run the lawn pack. So let's get to work. 
Now, woo! Yellow Jack. Okay. So we're going to drop our four bolts through our plate and on the back side. We're going to put our four connectors. Then our spacers. Now, to make sure that these do not go anywhere, I have Permatex, Permatex Red Thread Locker. And we are going to plot, apply plenty of thread locker. going to be very liberal with this because I don't want these suckers moving. So if a little bit of it drips off, it drips off. I'm not worried about it, but I want to make sure there's plenty on here to keep these from vibrating out at any point in time. That doesn't feel like it's going to walk or move or anything. It looks nice and even. So, let's uh, go ahead and slide. Stick our key back in the keyway. And we will slide our impeller on. sure we've got good clearance in the back there's a little bit of a gap there okay guys so I'm back from the hardware store I got I went and picked up a 7 16 20 bolt I'm gonna have to open up the hole in the end of the shaft in the end of the adapter plate here to actually accept that 7 16 bolt because it was set up for the 3 8 that was in there. So I've got my drill bit. We're gonna we're gonna drill her out. This on warm. Oh, keys want to walk back again. There it goes. Slide the key up. Now, same thing we did with the other one. Plenty, plenty, plenty of Loctite. You definitely don't want this vibrating loose. Those are tight. Now I just 
just have the one back here behind the muffler. That's tight. Real quick, I want to get this engine bolted down. So that oh, it doesn't fall off on me. So in order to do that, I've got three-eighths flat washers here, and four of them, and I should have some three-eighths, ow, a metal splinter, some three-eighths nuts. I love this hardware container, or at least I did have some, I had a whole box of three-eighths nuts somewhere. Not in here, apparently. Now I can get this bolted down. That way it's not going to fall off of here on me. That's good tight. Drop that back down. Now we'll put our impeller in. Our impellers in. And they do clear the front housing. Perfect. That's what that was what I was concerned about with the spacers was making sure that, that impeller didn't hit either side of the housing. Which it doesn't. Ouch. Fingers. Come on. There it goes. Just had to wiggle it the right way. I'm going to get her filled up with oil, filled up with gas, get her outside, get her hooked up to the mower, because i got to get the hose back on here. Um, I think I may, before I do that, get a bolt in here that way my discharge piece I can actually notch it and get a bolt that'll hold it down because it does tend to walk up and blow off and I have a feeling that with this engine having a little more power where it can run at full RPM all the time and not bog down I'm gonna have issues blowing the discharge piece off so I'm gonna drill put a bolt through I've got some small carriage bolts I'm gonna run one through from the inside where I can tighten that down with a nut and a washer on the outside and just slot it. That way if I need to take it off, I can slide it up and off. Uh, if I have to, I'll weld it on the inside just to hold it in place. But that way, this will be held down. first start of the 301 cc predator on the yard vac we're going to throttle it down gas is on choke and kill switch is on boy she fired right up for a minute, double check my oil level, since I, since I just filled it up. What's that? It's surprisingly quiet. 
Yeah, for as big an engine, yeah. Well, that's idle, too. All right. I'm going to check the oil level. Yeah, we're right there where we need to be. That's good. Fire back up again. No choke. Let's see if it starts. All right, let's give her a little choke. There you go.